Bem-vindos a mais um Cranking Podcast, hoje temos connosco um convidado muito especial, Jack Thompson, ou como alguns de vocês vão conhecer, Jack da Ultra Cyclist. Jack, welcome here at Cranking Podcast. How are you today? Nice to you, man. Yeah. Looking forward to having a good chat. Yeah, I hope so. You have a very nice, very nice smile today. You have been training uh, today or not? Just a short one, actually. We um, had a couple of long weeks of training, getting ready for an event. And uh, so finally on a bit of a recovery week. We've actually, um, we've actually got a film crew here with us tonight. So I'm in the background. I've got a couple of people behind cameras and a, okay. and a soundie. So this is going to um, this is going to be in the next film. Okay, so it's an inception, a small inception yeah. here right now. Okay, that's cool. You're being recorded, <laughs> Jack. Do you remember where where you were at um, 11 October 19, 2019? Yeah, I was. The memory is a little hazy because I was a little tired, but I was. Um, I remember bumping into you actually in the yeah. car park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I think, the first guy arriving there and I was taking my bike out from my car and you came talking to me and I remember all the journey that you have been from Girona until Caramul in that day and I remember starting thinking, oh, this guy, it's not real. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long way, but it was um, like Caramulo was, was, was almost like a bit of a, uh, like a mythical place because like arriving there so late at night, having ridden written from Girona yeah. and like arriving at the big hotel where we all sort of spent the couple of days there. And it was almost like, yeah, it was like I was in a movie or something. It was super pretty and I loved it. Oh, it was that experience that, that day is from Girona, um, Girona until, until Caramulo. Yeah, it was, uh, it was tough riding. Hey, like on well i say on paper but like online like looking at the statistics it's always hard to tell how a ride's going to be if you've never ridden the roads and yeah. like it said there was 12,000 meters of elevation and it's hard to put that into context if you say 12,000 meters of elevation across 1200 kilometers because it's not like a, it's not like you say i'm doing 2000 meters in 100 kilometers it's hard to quantify that yeah <laughs> and i found like especially like crossing that border into portugal Like Portugal is a seriously hilly place. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the hardest bit was that last climb up to uh, the, the final hotel. Like it went on and on and on. It was steep and it was hard. But, yeah, no, I had a great time. It was good fun. Okay. I'm going to speak in Portuguese. Para quem, para quem, não, para quem não viu, vão ao canal do, do Jack. O Jack fez em, em 2019, foi um evento do, do Paroma, foi quando eu conheci o Jack. E o Jack nesse dia fez, nessa altura, fez o percurso Girona, Girona Caramul. Está em vídeo, está documentado, podem ver. E já vamos falar um bocadinho mais porque é que ele fez, porque é que ele fez isso. Jack, in 2019, when you made that, you, you made it with one point. With one sure. goal. Can you tell us about a little bit more about that, that goal on that day in specific? Yeah. So, um, like going back a little bit, I suffered from mental health a lot growing up and I had issues with, with drugs and was, was in and out of rehab. And when I found the bike, it was like the bike became my, almost like my medicine, like my mental health improved drastically when I spent more time on the bike. And so... Since that time, back in early 2000s, I've been lucky enough to sort of make the bike my form of work now. So I ride full time. Yeah. And in order to try and give back to the people that I guess, you know, help me get to where I am now, like I like to talk about my struggles with mental health in the hope that, you know, I can help some other people as well. And so to coincide with World Mental Health Day on... I think it was the 10th of October, the day. Yeah, you arrived. That date. It, the 10th, I think you arrived at the 9 or something like that, right? Yeah. When, when, one day earlier, if I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And the goal was to uh, essentially arrive um, for World Mental Health Day and in doing so, raise awareness for, for mental health and show that, you know, Riding 1,200 kilometers might seem like an almighty task, but in the scheme of things, it's nothing compared to, you know, like the battles that people who suffer from mental health and depression go through on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was about raising awareness for mental health and, um, you know, that hashtag I use, it's okay not to be okay. So 
it was a powerful ride for me. For me, it was a very powerful moment when you show us your video from the KOM. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you start talking about the, it's not okay to be okay. And I'm going to yeah. say it here. I've, I've told you before. For me, right now, you, you have been a great help to let me search help for me in those days. Oh, man. I, I'm, so I'm telling you so this that, you and know. everybody's listening, but it, it is where it is. You know yeah, about that I, because we have changed a few messages about the, that kind of things, but the many thanks be, for people like man. you that, that put us thinking about that kind of things. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And like, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. And I think, you know, like it shouldn't be something that's stigmatized. Like we should be able to talk about it and guys should be able to, say they're not feeling good and not be made to feel, you know, any less manly than someone who doesn't talk about it. So, yeah, stoked for you, man. Many thanks about uh, for that. Jack, I I was listening to the podcast with, with Ted King and you, I think you've told about a trip in Bhutan with your father. Yeah. Like, awesome your, like your best rides ever? Yeah. Yeah? We do this. So, like, my dad and I have this really good relationship where we didn't always have a good relationship. So when I was going through a tough time with substance abuse, like he was cracking the whip, like he didn't like it. And because of that, like I, you know, I, I went and got help and I, you know, overcame that. But mm -hmm. ever since then we've been like mates. So while he's a dad to me and like, I'll always look up to him as a daddy. I also consider him like a really good friend. And so, yeah, every year we essentially like pick somewhere in the world where we're going to go and ride bikes and just have fun together. That's very And nice. that one year we chose Bhutan and we knew nothing about it. It was crazy because <laughs> some of us reached out on Instagram and said, oh, I'm a guide in Bhutan. Like, if you ever want to come here, like, I'm happy to guide you. And so, like, we literally sent him a message and said, yeah, we want to come to Bhutan. <laughs> and we went and rode from the far west to the far east together and then down into India. Oof. And it was like a, a trip I'll never forget, like one of the best, just eye-opening. That's cool. That's cool. Never never thought about right, right that. Even yeah. I, I, I have a, an idea that one day I went to ride in, in Australia because I remember when I was oh, very yeah. young, so in Eurosport, like a tour of Australia in mountain bikes, something like that. Yeah. I, and I remember the first time that I saw it and I said for me one time, one day I want to do something like that. Well, I know a few people in Australia, so you're always welcome to. Okay. I don't know. We'll get to know you. <laughs> Jack, tell me one thing. Uh, yeah. which, wa which was your, I know what more difficult, but then the run in, to say, so in 2017, you made the five, the 500 cycling, 500 kilometers in, the, in one year. 2018, yeah. the Taiwan KOM. 2019, the three Verestings, three countries. What a yeah. journey. And 2019, the Girona Caramulu. Which one was the more that at the end, you when you arrive at home, or in the last year, you have the World Guinness record? Yeah. The most powerful for you, I don't know, because the World Guinness record, it's a World Guinness record. Yeah. I'm just going to let this train pass by so <laughs> it gets a bit noisy. If you can hear it, it's the <laughs> people heading back down to Barcelona. <laughs> um, so I guess the most difficult one I would say would have been the three Everestings. Yeah. Not because I think it was the hardest ride, but I think like my nutrition strategy wasn't dialed in Like I would, I look back at myself and I was, I consider myself like a bit of a rookie back then in that I just wasn't doing it seriously. It was more, oh, let's just go and smash ourselves and see what we can do. <laughs> so I think I didn't eat properly. I didn't eat enough. And for that reason, I really suffered in the last two or three ascents. So the hardest one for that reason was the three Everest things. I think now if I went and did it, it would be like a different story because I've learned a lot since then. The most rewarding one for me would be the world record from last year. I can Just imagine. because for a number of reasons, actually, because last year was like a, a difficult year for everyone and I thought, you know, 
I didn't think I'd end up doing anything last year. So to come away with a world record is like amazing. <laughs> but uh, like, yeah, that was, and I think because the length of it, like seven days, it's a long time to sort of, you know, stay on yeah. track and have everything go to plan. So like that sense of relief afterwards, it was like, oh, like I still don't think it sunk in, but like, it was, you know, <laughs> like it was like, Oh, just that big breath. Like yeah, it's done. I, I, I saw the movie. Uh, yeah. I, I saw the stories during the, the the seven days. I was riding by my own on those days, and I remember one day that I was very tired. And I yeah. see on your stories. You yeah, 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 yeah. In my birthday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> and I was like, I, I cannot be tired. This guy is riding six days in a row right now so <laughs> i cannot be tired uh, um that was hard hey like there was one day where the weather was brutal like super windy super like raining and like just almost counting down on the wahoo like how many kilometers have i got to go and that's the worst thing you can do because it goes so slowly yeah when that day was over i was like oh you know like now that i've got through that like i can get through anything I don't know how you could sleep after that kind of rides, you know, and wake up at the other days. At the other day, wake yeah. up. How, 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 how is your body on the on the other day in the morning? You wake up okay or? Yeah, I actually wake up pretty good. Like, so we were in the house. So we had a house. Like, I'll yeah. set the scene. Like, we're in the house. I've got my coach there who's basically cooking my lunch and dinners yeah. and breakfast, <laughs> zippy. Um I've got the guy, Matt, who's making the film. So he's mm -hmm. basically like following everything. And then I've got my mate Mickey there who was basically driving one of the cars one day for Matt to film out of. And he was also like if I had a um, like a problem with the bike, he'd, I'd bring it to the house and he'd fix it. So I had the three guys there. <laughs> Every morning, Zippy would do the morning shift. Mm -hmm. So I'd wake up at 2 a.m., Zippy would wake up at 2 a.m. and Matt would wake up at 2 a.m., And it was like the schedule was I'd weigh myself because I wanted to see if I was dehydrated and then I'd go straight downstairs, coffee, breakfast, quick activation exercises and go. Like when my alarm went off, like I was sharp, so sharp. Like I was almost, I was downstairs getting coffee ready before the others were awake. Like <laughs> I was just on a mission. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like if I think back on that week, There wasn't a time where I was really, really, like, super tired. Okay. Like, I was fatigued, like, you know, your legs are sore. And I think it was something that my old man said to me before I started. He said, I want you to look at this week as though it's like, don't look upon it as though it's a week. He said, look upon it as though every day you've only got one goal, and that's to ride the 500 kilometers. So every day, if I could tick that off the list. Yeah. Tomorrow was a new day, you know, and I only had to achieve that 500 kilometers in that day. And I think breaking it up into those small chunks made it way more manageable. And so, yeah, funnily enough, like I didn't wake up any morning and think, wow, I'm, I'm fucked, you know, like I was good. <laughs> The day I woke up and it was raining and windy, I was like mentally, oh, it's going to be a long day. Um, yeah, the body held up pretty well. And with the food, everything okay? I had some issues actually the first <laughs> the first two days. So the worst thing you can do is try something new on a like on an event like this yeah. from a nutrition point of view. And I I trialed um, so I'd been using like a Morton the drink mix, mm -hmm. um, and my goal was I just wanted to drink Morton because I knew that if I drank one bottle an hour, that was 90 grams of carbohydrate. And that would essentially see me through. But then I thought, you know, if I can get more in than the 90 grams, then that'll be better. Okay. And so what I did is I made the mistake of eating rice cakes and Morton. And if you imagine, like, you're drinking a liter of fluid every hour yeah. and then you're eating, like, a rice cake, the rice and the fluid. Okay, expanded. I can imagine. Yeah. So I just lost my appetite. And I think it was the second morning I woke up and it was, I was in like a massive calorie deficit because I just hadn't eaten enough. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm going slower and slower and I'm sort of 
looking at my clock, looking at the Wahoo, thinking like I'm falling behind schedule here and it's not a good feeling. <laughs> Start the <laughs> so, Sports nutritionists will look at me now and cringe, but I actually decided, look, I needed calories. It didn't matter where they were coming from. McDonald's was going to be where I was going to get my calories from. Yeah. And it's like either you eat or you don't finish the record. Okay. And so for lunch that day, I, I didn't even want to eat McDonald's, but I, I just ate it and ate it and ate it. And, like, it's amazing how my energy came yeah. up just having fuel in the body. And so that's something we've, I've been working really hard on this last six, eight months since then. And we can chat about it later, but I've got a new device on the arm, which I'm using to help me with my fueling. Yeah. Um, oh, that's which, cool. Tell yeah, us the a super little bit more about that. I've actually, well, I'll take this off and show you. Okay. So it's essentially like a glucose sensor. Okay. Like a, so my dad's diabetic, so I grew up with him always using like monitoring his glucose. Okay. But it's like a... It's a small sort of circle on my arm. So, para as pessoas que só estão a ouvir, que só estão a ouvir, que só estão a ouvir isto no, 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 em áudio, o Jack está, está -nos a mostrar, portanto, um dispositivo que tem uh, no, no, no braço, ok? E o que isso faz é que eu tenho uma app no meu phone, e isso se conecta por Bluetooth ao meu phone. Então, cada vez que eu como algo, é uma visão live, e mostra o que o meu nível de sugar está fazendo. Oh, isso é legal. So I can manage now exactly how much I need to eat and what foods I need to eat to work out how well fueled I am. So I think in terms of like my training and lead up to, to the next events, like I'm in a way better position than I've, oh, I've been cool. in previous years. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping I don't have to ever resort to McDonald's again to fuel me. <laughs> <laughs> We hope not. And you made it. Yeah. You searched that device by yourself, or your team, the coach, the GP told you, Jack, go for it. So I actually have a like a couple of friends in Girona that ride for the Nova Nordis team. Okay. And they're all diabetics actually, and they said, look, I think you you'd be you know a really good candidate to use this and and you know see if it works for you and I. I reached out to the guys and um, yeah, we've actually partnered together and I think it's going to be a um, yeah, super successful partnership because I think there's That's some of the things I'm doing, they might not have that data yet. And I think we can, yeah, look at, you know, from a scientific point of view, how the body works doing these ultra things. So it's going to be cool. Very cool. You, you live in Girona. Girona, it's like the, it's like Monaco for the cyclists. Do you go well with them? Um, used to ride With the, the other the other cyclists that live there, or go ride by I, yourself. Um, I do like most of my training. I like to do alone, just because, like the events I do are alone, and I think a lot of it is spending time alone in your own yeah. in your own mind. But in saying that, like like today, for example, we we rode out um, the sort of local climb here, Els Angels, and. Um, There's like kids riding up and like I meet up with a young guy riding up and like I'll always stop and I rode up to the top with him and like That's cool. while I will generally go out alone and do my own thing, like if I catch up with someone or they catch me or whatever, like I'm always happy to have a ride and a yarn and mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's good. And I like interacting with the locals. So yeah, it's a good opportunity for me to try and practice a bit of Catalan and Spanish. <laughs> it's okay, you're Catalan? It's difficult. Huh? Ah, it's... Poco, poco. <laughs> poco, poco. <laughs> Probably Spanish, actually. <laughs> you have already tried Calsoch? Yeah, man. Yeah. You the like season, it? Just, I think we just finished the season. Yeah, super yeah. good. I miss super that. Good. I miss that, you know? Yeah. I like, like, I like to eat with my hands. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I like that kind of thing. <laughs> I miss that. With the, the special sauce. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Super good. Good times, good times, good times. Yeah. Jack. Tell me one thing. You remember your first bike? Uh, like, I remember my first road bike. I don't remember my first ever bike. I have video footage of, like, when my mum unwrapped it. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And I do remember my first road bike. It was a, um, it was a secondhand giant uh, TCR, maybe. Okay. And at the time, yeah, I just I wanted to do triathlon. Oh. And so it was a Christmas or a birthday present, and I was, yeah, over the moon. I think I 
my parents even got me like clipping shoes and that first ride I, I must have fallen over three or four times just trying to like clip in it happens the same to me <laughs> yeah yeah it's super embarrassing I, I write I write clips like since 2002 no yeah 2012 because all, all my life I I ride mountain biking or downhill bikes so it was uh, like pedals all the way you know yeah 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 And the um, it takes a bit of getting used to to begin with. That. Yeah, <laughs> just forget you put in. You are trying a new pedal right now, no? Yeah. How how they? How oh they my are. my pedals. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. The, the new ones from yeah from your your sponsor. Yeah, so I'm using the um the Wahoo Speed Plays. So I've had like a I've had a heap of like a bike not bike fit issues, but. Like I've always sat crooked on my saddle. Mm -hmm. Like I've always felt like my feet aren't really stable. And so when Wahoo said like, you know, you're keen to try the, the speed play pedals, like I was keen to try anything to try and sort out this crookedness. Okay. And I found using the speed plays, having that sort of unlimited float, it actually allowed me to see where my feet wanted to be rather than forcing them into position. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, and from there we've then tweaked some things with my bike fit. Um, like I don't have to use the pedals, but like I want to use the pedals now because they work for me. So I've gone a slightly longer spindle mm -hmm. just because I, I like a wider stance, just okay. works with my hips and they're sort of readily available. But, um, yeah, I'm stoked with them. Oh, that's really cool. happy. That's cool. I must try one of those one of these days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll see if I can get you some. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I to love them. Okay. Jack, I, I want to speak a little bit more about the, um, the mental health issue. It's not an issue, but about that. Sure. I, I know that in the future you want to do more things about that or bring yeah. more awareness to, 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 to this question. I don't know if that there are lots of people that talk to you in, by Instagram or something like that. Oh, Jack, yeah. you, you have problems. Can you help me where I can search help or how do you deal with your, with your problems? Yeah, I, I do get a lot of messages and like I try and reply to everyone because like, like I'm, I make it, you know, I talk about it and I'm, I tell people that I want to help. So, like, if I get a message, like, while well, I might reply two or three days later, like, I try and reply to everyone because, like, for them just to reach out to me and feel comfortable talking to me about it, I think is, like, a huge first step. So, yeah, yeah like, I want to do more. At the moment, it's hard with COVID because I had some ideas around travelling on the bike and running some sort of, like, seminars. Okay. And obviously, like, with the restrictions at the moment, it's difficult to do that, but... Mm -hmm when things return to, I guess, somewhat more normal, then I'd love to, yeah, I want to do more and I've got some ideas and things that I want to try and roll out. So, That's cool. yeah, if I can help more, then I'd be stoked. Okay. As pessoas em casa vão ver os vídeos do, do Jack, eu não me canso de dizer isto, mas os vídeos são muito importantes, o Jack fala bastante vezes sobre, sobre esta problemática de, das doenças mentais e a luta que ele teve até chegar ao ponto onde, onde está hoje, é importante que para quem quiser não só ver os, os objetivos que o, que, o, que o Jack se propôs a cumprir em cima da bicicleta e está a cumprir, mas também para ver até onde é que ele chegou com a ajuda da bicicleta. Jack, I was only telling the people that are listening to us to go to your YouTube channel and saw your videos where you talk ah, about, uh, where you talk about this and, and they can, they can see you the, the achievements that you have made. And when you, when you talk about this, like, I remember that you in one video said, if I have one bad day today and tomorrow, if I, if I know that I'm going to ride my bike, I don't think a lot, something like this. Yeah. No? Yeah. 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 Like if, if I can just get on the bike, it's like, I know everything will be okay. Yeah. Just you, like you, that's the medicine, you know, the secret. You 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 still you still think that way. Yeah, like yeah. some like some days if I've got like a lot I need to get done, like if I have a like someone might look at me and say, Oh, all you need to do is ride your bike, but there's sort of a lot more to it than just riding a bike. Like I I have to make stuff happen and emails and like it's all very much a part of what I do. So like some days 
might be super busy with trying to make something happen or get a trip together or organize a project. So like I might wake up and think I need to get that done first. Mm-hmm. And the reason because of that is like then I have a reward at the end and that's getting on the bike and <laughs> I hate the idea of riding and then having to do something after that. That's cool. I still use the bike as like a reward. Jack, the days that you don't have a planning train, do you go yeah. out to ride your bike, right? Just to grab, grab a coffee or something like that. You 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 like that kind of things as well, no? In summer, especially, like I'll ride and I make a, a point of not putting on cycling clothing because it has to remain casual on a day off. Okay. But I, in summer, I do enjoy like going for in Girona. We've got like a, a small river and I'll ride out there and like some sandals and just go for a swim without a t-shirt or something. Yeah. And super casual. But actually I'm trying just because I'm really like paying attention to recovery <laughs> nowadays because I think it, like I've just seen the importance of it. If I have a day where the coach says don't do anything, you don't do I'm nothing. really not doing anything because yeah, you you must trying to do like the to. hard days really hard. Yeah, and the easy days really easy. <laughs> If the, the, there are people that are uh, that are thinking what kind of hard days are they? Yeah, I'm going to speak you know, I'm going to tell. The last big train that you have made how, yeah. how many hours? How, how long for how long? 11 hours something like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's like I, I do like 34 hours over four days. So it's, um, yeah, pretty big days on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> What you prefer, gravel or roads? Um, I still love being on the road, hey? Yeah. <laughs> like I love being on the road because you can cover so much ground in a day. At the same time, like if I don't have a time limit, mm-hmm. like I'd, I'd go on the gravel because like you can ride for three hours and you might only cover 20 kilometers or something. And so like, yeah, I guess the answer is from a training point of view, I love the road. From a just getting out and having fun point of view, the gravel. Okay. I, I, I don't miss yeah. road my, my, my road bike, you know? Don't you don't ask, miss? No, don't ask me why. There are some times that I miss, I don't know, look to my, when I arrive home and say, oh, it's, it's only be four hours and I only made like 30 kilometers in my gravel yeah. bike. But I think I, it's so much fun riding my, yeah. my gravel bike than my road bike. So I'm not sure if I'm going to buy a road bike again. And I think as well, like, You know, like there's so many benefits to riding on the gravel. Like, you know, you don't have traffic. Yeah. Like that's a massive benefit in terms of just being safe on a bike. Like the roads you can explore on a gravel bike, like it's just endless. <laughs> And I think like, you know, like the, if you like your bike there, I'm sure you can run like what, 50 mil tires or something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You can go anywhere with that. It's like, that's a, you know, that's a do everything bike. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very happy with this bike, you know. I, my, yeah. my, my last bike, it was not a gravel bike. It was a cyclocross bike, a Ridley. I remember, actually. Yeah, you with remember. The brakes. Yeah, 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 with Candice. Yeah. <laughs> I take it for a spin today earlier in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I remember when I bought that bike, my first the, the first thing that I, that, I, that I think about it was I want to make something that I don't know that's going to be gravel. Yeah. But just ride like a road bike. On gravel roads, and yeah. now I know that in 2012 or something like that, I was thinking about making gravel rides. So yeah. <laughs> it's very strange thinking about that, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, yeah, like the technology is crazy. Like with the gravel bikes and things, like tire clearance and other like yeah. I know with my gravel bike, I have like the small shock absorber, the future shock in the in the divert, like. Like it's comfortable. You're not getting rattled around. It's, okay. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. They're, they're specialized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jack, tell, tell us one thing. Last year, so you have break the world record, but it was a yeah. very difficult year for all of us. Everybody or almost everybody start, stay at, at home. I remember sure. seeing you crashing on the at home, riding. I'm going to tell for nothing, but riding 
just seeing what's happening by the window. It was a difficult yeah. time for you. Don't go out. Your work was not, it's not like ours. So yeah, you were stuck at home as well. Yeah, like I love using the the Wahoo kicker as a training tool once or twice a week. Like for efforts, it's like you can't beat it. Mm -hmm. But to ride that every day for three months, like the reason I ride a bike is not is not because I enjoy like digital fun. Like I don't play PlayStation. I don't. That's why I don't use Swift. But I like to get outside, and so to not be able to go outside and actually, you know, because it's for me, it is like a medicine as well. Like we spoke about before, yeah. like I found that really difficult. And what I had to do was I created like some small goals around what I was doing indoors. And I think, you know, I can't talk because I haven't been to prison, but for example, like I think whatever circumstance you're in, if you can make, not the best of it, but like if you can set goals around what you're doing and mm. it helps to pass the time. Yes. And so like for me, I set these miniature goals of, you know, I wanted to make this improvement over this amount of time and I concentrated on different things using the Suffer Vest app, using like the stretching and mm -hmm. did things that I would normally neglect. <laughs> and I actually tried to use it as to my advantage. And what was interesting, like coming off those three months inside like my fitness didn't really take much of a dive and it actually improved in some regards in different areas that mm -hmm. I'm like the stretching or the super high intensity stuff so it was like a bit of a blessing in disguise and I think going outside now as you probably know like it's yeah you appreciate it more I remember we are leaving the second lockdown and I remember a yeah. few months ago when I go right for the first time, I was like, yeah, I'm free again. Yeah. So <laughs> it's really? like that, that prison feeling, you know, like lockdown. Yeah. yeah that, it's weird in this day and age to feel like we're trapped. Yeah. And you, you feel pressure from your sponsors to make content during those times? No, I didn't. Like, to be honest, the sponsors were really good. Like, they... I think because everyone was in the same position, yeah. it was almost like the social media world, everything, big, like content was basically people doing things inside. Yes, yes. That's and true. so from that point of view, it was really good. And we we actually like had a really cool project with Wahoo where it was about documenting what I was doing inside. Mm -hmm. And so that gave me purpose as well. And like I tried to look at the positive sides of it Okay. And, yeah, I think from, like, working with sponsors, like, the big thing for me is, like, I I want it to be a relationship and not just uh, you give me something and I'm going to do this in return. Like, I actually – and so, you know, we could pick up the phone or jump on a call and actually talk to each other. And I think that's the, the beautiful thing about a good partnership is yeah. that being able to do that and, you know, understanding each other. So, for me, it was no issue with sponsors. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice to know. Yeah. Here we used to make. A, I used to make a question that came from the last, um, the last people that have been, the last person that have been here. So the yeah. question it was, and I'm going to ask you one question that I don't have, that I don't have made to you until now, and you would like, yeah. okay? But the the question that they have made in the last episode it was, from all your bikes, if you only could choose one, which one you could choose and why? Ah, uh, for me, the Specialized Diverge. <laughs> so the reason being at the moment, like in all honesty, I haven't ridden my specialized tarmac since the world record okay. because yeah, in all honesty, like I bought a size, I got a size that was too small. So okay. I'd experienced a lot of hand numbness during the record and afterwards. And so for me, the diverge is a little bit higher at the front. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's comfortable. I actually love the future shock in the bike. So when I'm on the road, like I have, whether it's That's rough shock. road, I can turn it on or turn it off. Okay. I can put 47 mil tires on it. I can, at the moment I've got it with 32 mil tires. Like for me, that bike does it all. Okay. Um, in saying that, I do have a new bike that I should pick up tomorrow. Oh. And I'll, it's the Specialized Roubaix, okay. which is essentially like, 
a mix between the diverge and the tarmac and that it has the future shock. Okay. It doesn't have obviously the clearance for 47 mil tires, mm -hmm. but it is a road bike. And in the wind tunnel, it was tested as faster than the previous tarmac. So for what I do, like I think it's the perfect bike. But if I could only choose one, it'd be the Diverge because I can then ride on the gravel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good. The guys in Specialized going to love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> good bike. Jack, let's talk about a little bit about um, 25 of April. Yeah, Freedom Day. Freedom Day, you're in Portugal. And Jack, you're going yeah. to be here in Portugal. Let us know why. I don't know. I, I don't oh, want yeah. to I don't want to tell. I want to be tell that, that went to be you to tell us what you're gonna do. Sure. So ever since I came to Portugal in 2019 and I first spoke with Nelson, Nelson told me about this mythical road in Portugal called the N2 which is essentially the road connecting Chaves in the north and Faro in the in the, the south. south. Correct. And, like, I did a lot of research and, like I said, Portugal's Route 66, they're saying, from what we said, it's yeah. like the third longest continuous road in the world. That's it. So the plan is, I thought, what, what can I do on the N2? Why not try and break a record? And Nelson sent through details of the previous record and, like, I'm always keen to give things a... Give things a good good nudge. So, but why not come over and try and break the N2 record, okay. but do it to coincide with Freedom Day, and shoot a film that compares what freedom on a bike means to me and to cyclists, mm -hmm. and what freedom means to the people of Portugal. It's a very nice idea. Work out what the similarities are. So, yeah, I'll be over in Portugal. What are we today? Thirty first of March. In like three weeks. Three weeks. Uh, yeah, pretty excited. <laughs> I'm excited as well. <laughs> I would. I went to see that. I went to be, to be there. And uh, you 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 came with the team, correct? So with the yeah. guys who's gonna filming you. I don't know if with your coach or not. With yeah, so Zippy, my coach is gonna come over. He'll. Okay. We're gonna drive over. Um, just because of with COVID, like we. We would prefer to just be in yeah. the car. Yeah. So we're going to drive over and then Matt, the filmmaker, he's going to fly in from Holland. Okay. Um, and it'll basically be three of us and then the, the Portuguese team from okay. Paruma. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's a very good, good, good idea. I'm looking forward to see you that day, sir. <laughs> be good to see you guys again as well because it feels like forever since um, – 2019, you know? Yeah, you know, sometimes I'm thinking about Paroma 2019 and I don't remember that we are in 2021. For me, yeah, like 2020, it's yeah. like a year. Yeah, that exists because we live it, but doesn't exist. Yes. Yeah. In fact, we don't yeah. have to live too much. I don't have to live too much. <laughs> like, oh man, like I have such good memories from Paroma, like that big buffet down, yeah. like, Underneath the restaurant, the restaurant, yeah. There and you know, I, I remember the, the 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 last dinner. It was very cool. I remember when I arrived because I was the last the last guy arriving. I'm always yeah. telling this to the people. <laughs> ah, man, no shame. Huh? <laughs> I pass. It was very very hard for me. I was very heavy. In those yeah, days. you did it. Great but, job. But but I did it, and I will. I I remember. When I start talking to Nelson, because I met Nelson in that year, you know, and I start yeah. talking with him, and he said to me, "No, you must come. If you don't know, you came alone. There's no problem." And nowadays, yeah. I think it was the best decision that I've made in my life. It's to yeah, be in like change yeah, halfway, you know, like new opportunities. It's cool. I'm, I met you, met the guys here in Paroma. I, that, that they are my family right now, you know. I met, yeah. I met so much so cool people and learn so much about gravel and everything that it was the best, best decision that I've made. Yeah. Very cool. I'm, very cool. Happy to hear. I'm looking forward to hopefully like Paroma can run in 21 and I hope so. Like, I, like I don't know nothing. In fact, year. I don't know nothing. In fact, but yeah. I, I hope so because I, I need to ride with people, you know, I know yeah. that, that you like to ride alone, but I'm it's riding, fun. It's, it's but people. it's fun to, to riding with people. It's different. I don't know. Go. 
Yeah. Grab a coffee, eat something in the middle of the of your ride, talk to yeah. people. I miss that kind of vibes, you know? Less that, 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 went... food, that food stop we had for Paroma. What that was still food? probably some of the best food I've ever had, I reckon. What to be fair, no, and the place was very beautiful, oh, huh? Yeah. It was like a um how do you describe it? It was almost like a I'd say like a Spanish, like a Masia, like a big family. Yeah, it was like that. Yeah, it was a, a big farm with lots of food, yeah. plenty of food. Yeah, and that pool. They had the pool. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't see too much. When I arrived at that in that point, I was <laughs> I was blind, you know? Blind, my yeah. my my legs were burning, burning, burning. And I, <laughs> I told to a guy. It's for me, it's then. And he said, no, Gustavo, yeah. it's only 50 kilometers. And I said, okay, okay, I'll yeah. go. And I'll go with Andre. Blah, blah, blah. But it was very, very hard. Wow. Yeah. I think it was them, harder man. than when I made the Grand Fundo with, the, with a single speed bike. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, very, I'm a very stupid guy in this kind of things, you know? <laughs> You're a bad man. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> I'm a kid. <laughs> <You both are>. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, tell us one more thing. Which question that you would like that I have made to you and I don't have made it until, until this point? Ah, so, uh, so you're going to ask me a question? No, I need you to tell me to let me know a question that I don't have made to you until right until now. And do you? Ah, okay. Um, Malta, não se esqueçam de todos os domingos mm -hmm. às 8 da noite sai o Cranking Podcast. Está disponível em todas as plataformas: YouTube, Spotify. Não se esqueçam, não se esqueçam de subscrever. All right. What's the. Like the craziest things that the craziest thing that's happened to you on a bike. Okay. All right. So what's the craziest thing that's happened to you on a bike or a bike trip mm -hmm. that people don't know about? Okay. Now so it's like you've got to you've got to like it's gotta be like a secret you're gonna tell people. Okay. You you want to give us an answer for your own question? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was on you again. Yeah, oh, yeah, I do it, but it's a very good question. So, <laughs> uh, I do have one in mind, yeah. and I was, I was telling. So, um, like, a, the, my first like ultra event was the transcontinental across from Belgium to Turkey. Okay, and I got food poisoning in Switzerland of old places, hmm. and um, it's probably the, the seventeen euro coke that I had. Um, but no, I, I'd had like a, a curry and I, yeah, I got food poisoning and I checked into a, I'd climbed up a pass and it was super cold and quite late at night. And I checked into a very small like hotel. Anyway, I woke up the next morning, like after a, like a very restless night's sleep. And I was like, whoa, like. I didn't feel so good and, like, I felt like I'd been sweating through the night, like I was very, like, the bed felt wet and, um, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually had, like, a bit of an accident in the bed. Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, yeah, I'll, I'll leave the rest up to the imagination. But, yeah, I quickly hopped in the shower and left. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that's that's there's one for you. Okay, okay, <laughs> but I'm gonna ask the, to the to the, to the in the next the next episode. Episode. Yeah, cool. yeah, 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 Jack, just before we we finish this, tell us how how you live your your daily basis. So you wake up, there, you go to the gym, you go to the I don't know if you yeah. meet your coach all weeks, if you go to the doctor, something like that. How yeah, that how you it's a good work? question. Because it, actually we're, the crew we have here, we're actually documenting that at the moment, like yeah. what a typical week looks like. That's cool. So for me, like a typical day would be like I get up and I've, I won't go into all the detail. I'll give you yeah. sort of like <laughs> I'll get up. The first thing I do is I weigh myself, mm -hmm. not because I'm obsessed with weight, but more I want to see if I'm dehydrated or where my body is at. That at the moment, I check my blood glucose level because I want to see how well fueled I am. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually using a device so I can see how well I've slept. So I'm 
as soon as I wake up, I'm measuring like metrics to see like what position my body's in. I then like, I make coffee, I have a look out the window, wake up and I make some breakfast and I'll generally like try and call back home because they're six hours in front. So I get all the, the calls done and check the family and stuff. And then, yeah, my day is basically like on the bike. So where it might be two hours, it might be 11 hours. Like it, it varies a little bit depending on what sort of schedule I'm, I'm in. Um, and then, yeah, I come home and like in all honesty, like the rest of the day is normally a bit of a write-off. I'll try and catch up on emails but, yeah, I take it quite serious now because it is like this is a job and like I want to perform as best as I can. So, like I'll put my feet up and I'll actually like it's about recovering then because the next day I have to do it again. That's and so, yeah, feet up on the couch and I'll have a sleep or I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. watch something on Netflix and generally fall to sleep. And, and then, yeah, it's like I'll go to the shops and get stuff for dinner and go to sleep and do it all again. Okay, Jack, tell us one, one thing. I was thinking here, if it was not your wildness, youthness, I don't know if we can say this, you think yeah. that uh, we have been at this point with Jack, the ultra cyclist, with Jack Thompson, the world Guinness record? I don't know. You think if it was not that kind of, of life that you have been before, you, you, which point of your life you are living right now? If you like think if about I, if you think about that, I don't know. I rem, I don't know if you think about that or not. Like if I wasn't doing what I was doing now, yeah. what would I be doing? Yes. Like in all honesty, I'd probably still be working the job that I didn't enjoy working, and I'd be, you know, driven by earning money and buying new things and yeah, living like a more of a material life which I look at now and I sort of think, oh, I cringe at it. Yeah. But if I hadn't taken that plunge to follow this passion, I think I'd probably still be there, which is like it's a nice feeling knowing that I did take the plunge because I don't want to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I understand what you want yeah. to say. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's honestly what I'd be doing. Like I'd be chasing money and trying to buy a bigger house and all the stuff you don't really need. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I have that kind of thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. What like, I don't yeah. need, yes. Yeah, but 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 you still remember those times and think I could be on the other side of the road. I don't know if I'm explaining well. Yeah, like I often have to pinch myself that I'm doing what I'm doing now. Like it, you know, like and like I'll talk with someone back home. Like I still chat with one of the guys I used to work with and we still talk about how bad it was when we were doing mm -hmm. what we were doing. And like, that is a nice feeling, like looking back and realizing you weren't happy and you made a change. And That's yeah, cool. it is surreal thinking I'm living here, riding a bike and it's my job, but like, I feel like I work hard for it and like I'm, I'm like I want to give back as well with my the mission with the mental health stuff. So I'm yeah, like I feel driven and excited for what's ahead. That's cool. I have I have yeah. a question, very personal. You always write listening music? Yeah, I love music, huh? Yeah, yeah. I love music. But it, it's very You're the same? Yeah, and no, I, I can't. Huh? I can't write. No, no. I I must go by my own. Otherwise, okay. I'm, I I'm lost in my in my thoughts. You know that that's the the way that I write. Yeah, I, I, for I, me, I, like I I lose myself. Not like I still know what I'm doing, but like I can just. It's a very nice feeling. Like it's a like a therapeutic. Like I'm listening and I'm in the music, and it's I love it. Hey. There are lots of people that that like to write ultra distance and always think about what music I'm. I'm going to listen to that. It's, it's not for me. <laughs> sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, but it's not for me. Whatever works, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But you, you listen on your phone that, because for 11 ride, my phone, my, 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 my charge doesn't work. My battery <laughs> off my phone or you have a device just to listen to music. No, I, I, look, I use the iPhone. Okay. But I um, like sometimes I'll put it on airplane mode. Okay. So then I, I'm not, and I like, I have the music downloaded. So I'll download it on Wi Fi 
and then I'm not streaming or anything. So then, or I'll turn the screen down. That's and- stupid. But sometimes the people are asking me, you, you listen music? How, how you do it? I don't know. I don't know if the, there are an MP3 or something like that, that the people yeah. that like to listen to music. I thought about getting a separate one just so that like, if there's an emergency, I'm always have battery and I'm always yeah. within range because obviously turning your phone off is a little bit dangerous if something happens. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll look at doing that. So okay. let's see. Jack, there's Zenly any device advice that you went to left to some people that could, could listening to us and. Yeah. You know? Like I think, um, and maybe it sounds a little bit, corny or ironic but like if you're not happy doing what you're currently doing there's nothing to stop you making a change right some people would argue like it's a monetary thing and like I fully respect that but it doesn't have to happen overnight so like maybe it's a process that takes two years three years five years I don't know maybe it's a process that takes a week but start putting those steps in place to make the change now rather than in a year's time when you're a year behind. I think that would be the biggest advice. And the reason for that is I sort of put off, put off, put off making the decision I made. And I was so glad when I finally made the decision, I thought, why didn't I make it earlier? So that would be my advice. Okay. Many thanks. And I think that uh, we have achieved the end of the cranking, the special cranking podcast with you, Jack. Many yeah, it was thanks. Good. Sorry for my English, guys. It's a little bit rusty. I know there are some mistakes, but I hope that everybody understands what we are talking about here. It's better than my Portuguese. <laughs> Jack, I think we, until the 20th of April, I hope yeah. so, or something like that. Okay? Yeah, thanks, man. Okay. And let's um, maybe we record another one after the record. That could be cool as well. Okay, okay. Live in Chavez. Okay, could be. That's a, okay. Could be an event. No, no, it's, it's made it. It's made. Um, it. Okay, then, Jack, I have mean. a nice day, okay? You too. See you next okay, time. Bye. See you. Bye. Yeah, man. Bye.